All right, class. One of the topics we talked about was power balance. Now we're going to look at it in a moment and get an idea for what the power balance looks like, how we might get to it in the scan tool. Uh, in class, I will talk about some of the other things that there are or that there might be and, and different ways you might have heard of doing it. But this is going to be the recommended procedure for almost every modern vehicle. And when I say modern, I mean pretty much from 2000 to 2005 and forward. Um, there's a lot of reasons why. Things like washing down the cylinders, putting fuel in the oil, all things we want to be conscious of and avoid. Now, uh, so we're going to look, we're going to get to see exactly what the primary concerns or the primary way of viewing a power balance would be. Uh, and as we take a look at it, I'll explain a little bit of what's going on. So right here, I have the Maximus 3.0, and we're going to do a power balance test. We have a Ford F350. We're making sure that all of the information here matches the vehicle. So I'm happy with what I see. I press diagnose. It's going to tell me to put the ignition in certain settings. So I hit yes. Again, we make sure everything matches. I hit yes. And then I'm going to hit health report. This way I can see all the modules the vehicle has, as well as any codes that might be there. Now, you're always going to go into the PCM for a power balance function. But it's always good to see what modules does the vehicle have, what other codes. Later in the class, we'll talk about how things might interact. So we'll go into PCM and hit enter. Now it gives us all these options, reading codes, clearing codes, data stream. We're going to go to special function. In MATCO, that's where they hide it. And then you see power balance. Now there's a couple of other things, relative compression and all, but power balance will let us go in. And it gives us all the warnings of how the test needs to be set up. A um, couple of things. You're really going to want an engine that's warmed up at operating temp. You're going to want to shock the wheels, make sure it can't go anywhere. You're going to want to raise the RPM, preferably in gear. So that means you're having your foot on the brake and then you're going to actually hit the throttle and raise it. So you see everything it says. We hit OK. And here's what it's doing. If you see, it's giving us a layout of all the cylinders. It tells us the engine speed. And it gives kind of a ghost trace. Uh, and so this will give you an indicator if a cylinder were to be producing less power than all the others. Um, so it's watching that as it goes through and what we would normally do in a real live test is we would then also have somebody go in and raise the engine speed or we would sit in we would hit the throttle and by raising that engine speed we would get to see as the engine moved to different rpms and different loads if different cylinders started contributing less over time now it really is only comparing cylinder to cylinder um, and it's doing it by measuring the speed of the crankshaft after every power pulse. So it is not an in all and end all, but it is a very good, easy starting way to see if, as an engine gets loaded, if it runs, maybe even on a test drive, if there's a problem. And on a test drive, obviously, you're not going to look at this while you're driving. You're going to hit record and drive around. So that when you get back to the bay, you can review your results and see exactly what is going on. Uh, so this is a power balance test. This is how we do it. This is how we use the scan tool. That is going to be the recommended procedure. I'm going to tell you now, I can't promise that every vehicle will give it to you through every scan tool. But if the scan tool gives you the option, this is how we want to do a power balance.